le queremos dar la bienvenida al webinar de ASILAC sobre las aves y su impacto en la industria de la aviación. En el webinar de hoy tenemos el placer de contar con nuestros panelistas. Tiago Alexandre Lirio, experto de AIG Oficina de Sudamérica o en OASI. José Fernando Rojas, subdirector de Seguridad Operacional y Operaciones de Vuelo en IATA, Las Américas. Virginia Valverde, supervisora de, de SMS en AERIS. Y Gustavo Rosso, asesor de control aviario y fauna en el aeropuerto de Uruguay. Antes de comenzar, nos gustaría compartir con ustedes que, como es habitual, disponemos de interpretación simultánea eh, y podrán seleccionar el idioma español o el idioma inglés en el menú de Zoom donde aparece el símbolo del mundo. Además, si no quieren escuchar el audio original, hagan clic en silenciar audio original. Como recordarán eh, de webinars anteriores, la función de chat estará deshabilitada y en caso de que quieran hacer alguna pregunta a los panelistas, deberán enviarla al correo que encontrarán en la pantalla. Info arroba aero La sesión de preguntas y respuestas tendrá lugar al final de, la, de las presentaciones. Y por ahora me gustaría dar la palabra a María Elena Sandoval, asesora de ASILAC, quien dará unas breves palabras. Muy buenos días a todos. Gracias, Carla. El peligro aviario es considerado uno de los principales peligros para la aviación en la actualidad. Si bien es cierto, su, su, su riesgo no ha sido considerado alto por la falta de accidentes fatales que han existido, y, y sí han habido, pero son muy pocos. Lo que sí es cierto es que a diario ocurren impactos de aves con las aeronaves. We have bird impacts, and this uh, causes delays with airlines, it causes congestions in the airports, because airplanes cannot leave in time, it alters operational safety of the industry. We as ACI committed with safety in the operations in the airports, we considered to create a subcommittee of avian danger within our safety committee that is has been meeting since September of last year. It's one of the activities of the committee. We have this webinar impact of birds on the uh, flight industry, which is in order to raise awareness about the seriousness that a bird impact represents for aviation. So I give the floor to Tiago Lirio of ICAO. Thank you, Marilena. Good morning to everyone. Before starting, I would like to tell you it's a true pleasure uh, to receive this invitation to assist to this webinar and to uh, contribute from ICAO, from our Lima office that is available, 100% open doors to support any initiative they will contribute with operational safety for aviation in our region and thereby in the world. So from, well, on behalf of our director, Mr. Fabio Rabani, I thank you very much for this opportunity of being here and to participate, assist, and to exchange information and experiences with all of you. Well, as you can verify, I am Brazilian my mother tongue is not Spanish. In such a manner, I will speak as uh, slowly as I can so you can understand me, my Portoñol. And I would like to apologize if I make any mistake with my uh, Portoñol or my language. If something is not clear, please, I ask you that somehow you let me know so we can try to clarify any doubt or any pending issue. Well, we all know that bird strikes or phone risk or avian danger, this is not recent. Since the beginning of the, the aviation development, we have records of bird impacts against aircraft. 
So, this is a, an ecosystem that has been part of the bird's environment forever. And, and of course, sometimes we have some conflicts and unfortunately we will have impacts. So it's a problem or a situation that we've had for a long time. Okay, thank you. The state civil aviation authority or the, and the national administration of civil aviation must guarantee that any procedure of the certification of the manual to control animals and wildlife is developed and, and implemented for operational safety, which we call SNS. Birds and other wildlife animals that are present in the, in the airports and around the airports can be a threat or a hazard for the safety of aircraft. In some cases, this can be reduced, shortening uh, some schedules or flights, especially reducing some flights, uh, this can be done uh, by, or we can also manage a ha habitat properly or disperse animals that represent the danger to aviation. Meanwhile, the control of fauna is specific for every airport, developing programs and for ecological awareness should be done according to the national environmental norms. In case the states seek assistance to develop a program for, in order to control wildlife and to evaluate these types of control, we, we beg you that please get in touch with our regional office here in Lima, because we have our experts in our office and they're available to all of you, so we can assist you in in developing and implementing programs that involve the prevention of accidents and incidents with birds and other wildlife animals. Also with the evaluation, identification of dangers in order to identify substances or other aspects that can attract these types of birds or wildlife. As uh, airport operators, we have some functions and due to the importance of controlling birds and other wildlife, every operator has the responsibility to develop and implement and demonstrate the efficiency of a control program. And when we have uh, also for bird strikes, this program should be adapted according to the size and complexity of the airport, taking into consideration, identifying the hazards represented by birds and a proper assessment. Airport operators should, when, whenever feasible, they should implement a program adapted to local conditions with the assistance of local committees or other external uh, uh, operators. The operators of the airports should, whenever possible, appoint an airport coordinator to control birds and other wildlife animals. And they should involve the airport police and they should hire personnel to control these dangers. This could imply the formation of an airport committee, local committee for birds, or join a larger committee organization like Marilena just mentioned, We need to implement a specific program that the responsible personnel should be trained with proper personnel and they should have enough resources and funds to develop their work. They should keep a reliable record and notifications also. They should have a proper efficient manual 
this can help an airport in regard to complaints and if there's any responsibilities in case there's a bird, bird strike or problem with wildlife they should have a precise reliable internal record which can be audited and a proper procedures for notification this can demonstrate there's a proper and efficient wildlife control manual also Airport operators should reduce measures to reduce the number of birth strikes in the airports and as much as possible around the airports. We need to keep in mind that in volume one of Annex 14 of ICAO, we request that the states assess the dangers of birth strikes and dangers with other animals in the airdromes and vicinities by establishing a national procedure of records and notifications of birth strikes. Uh, with aircraft and other, also with other animals. They should also compile information on the presence of animals in the immediacy of their drums, which could represent a, a danger for the operations of the aircraft. In the annex, we also ask the states to compile or provide to ICAO all bird strikes. When should we notify? Well, there are many cases, of course, sometimes. So what ICAO is asking for, well, you, you're used to it. Many of you do it with lots of criteria or frequency. Whenever there's an event, well, uh, if, if a crew or personnel, well, uh, they must testify a birth strike it within the airdrome or in the vicinity. Evidence or damages from a collision will be identified by the maintenance airdrome personnel. Or if there's a dead animal uh, well, close to the runways or taxiways or up to 50 meter, meters from the landing uh, thresholds or if the presence of birds or animals around the aerodrome could cause a significant uh, impact on land, landing or taking off, or uh, if there's an exit from the runway. So these are the situations when we expect to receive a notification of an event that involves birds or other animals. Well, the authorities, we need an authority that investigates all of these accidents. And we have an ICAO division for this. Well, collisions with fauna have an important uh, weight, as Marilena mentioned. This reaffirms the need that joint work is done efficiently in order to reduce the number of events, also the seriousness. Well, and uh, there are proposals from the uh, investigation authorities. This has made it that somehow we have reduced many of the impacts we have observed. Here we can mention uh, sometimes uh, the, uh, the aircraft can reduce speed when they're taking off. Mostly uh, bird strikes are around 3,000 feet. Well, there are studies and databases, but these databases depend on all the notifications of, of events. So we can have a database that is complete in order to have better preventive actions so we can understand the characteristics that affect risk with fauna in the different areas. Risk evaluation of fauna has a fundamental role in preventing accidents. And of course, in the face of uh, making decisions together with the different authorities, we need to come up with proper tools and we need to have a more scientific and uniform or standard process. With this, it will be much easier to raise awareness with the authorities to force 
the attractiveness for uh, birds and fauna around the airports or within the airport safety security areas. And in this manner, we can contribute to flight operational safety. Here we see some numbers of the last few years in our region. We can see here that the regional office of ICAO, we have received 928 notifications of events of bird strikes. And this is the number that we currently have in our database. Out of all of this, only 22 were classified as accidents in view of the damages generated in the aircraft because as we can see at the end of the slide, there are zero fatal victims in South America in the last uh, few years registered in, a, in the database of ICAO. Well, that's what we call bird strike accidents anyway. So we have 22 accidents, 103 serious incidents, 483 incidents, and 320 sightings. Well, we have some expected uh, aspects, and we have a classification for minor or serious cases, but sightings, well, we're certain that there are many more than 320 sightings of uh, birds or wildlife, but people are not reporting sightings as they should. So I, I was hoping that sightings would be the largest number, but it's below incidents. So certainly well, when people see a, a bird or another animal around the airport, they're not reporting it. And this, uh, it would be extremely interesting to uh, to notify about this because this is extremely important. Well, in this manner, we know on my behalf, the investigation authority for accidents is always working on the top, on the tip of the iceberg because we need an event that will generate a minimal, minimum damage or a significant damage so it can be considered as a serious incident or accident. So an authority of EEG can develop a formal investigation process and we can generate a form, formal report with recommendations and for corrective aspects. But we know this is the smallest part of the problem. Well, the base of the iceberg is the sightings and incidents that are less uh, serious. So it's extremely important. And once again, I would like to congratulate you and emphasize the importance of committees like Marielena just mentioned, so we can work in the base of the iceberg and not only the tip of the iceberg, we have a, a smaller number of serious incidents or accidents in a safer aviation. I don't know if uh, there are Maybe have any questions, you can leave it for the end. So thank you very much for the opportunity, for your attention, and I'm open to any questions. Thank you. Sí, buenos días. Eh, well, me parece good morning. I think it's the time for my presentation. As you can see, I'm Fernando Rojas. I'm the director in the region for operational safety aspects. And, and uh, obviously, uh, uh, on behalf of IATA and my boss, we thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit of uh, our information in our database in regard to this risk for bird impacts in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. I will show you briefly the information we have into uh, in the global aviation 
management data where we obtain the information directly from the participant airlines and also from the land uh, suppliers. What I want to show you quickly here for the region, in general terms, for the incidents database, I want to show you what are the incidents where we receive uh, the more, the most reports from our members. As you can see, we have two bars, one in black, which is from all the operators that contribute to this database of IDX, and the green line or bar is is specifically so much from the airlines and from the ground suppliers in the Latin American Caribbean area. As you can see, bird strikes, well, unfortunately in the region is becoming very significant. Here we can see managing dangerous goods, situations with maintenance aspects, errors, in cargo uh, aspects in aircraft and so forth. This graph I will show you at the moment is very relevant since it will show us how many events. One moment, please. Uh, this, we can see here how many events we have in the region reported, as you can see on the one hand, We have the operators in red and the green line are the corporate offices in Latin America. I want to mention that this information is from the last two years, starting in May 2020 until April of this year, 2022. And here you can see clearly on the lower right hand side in both cases, trends of the bird impact reports, uh, direct impacts on uh, aircrafts are rising. In terms of bird strikes for every thousand operations that we have in our database, here we see once again, the red line for all operators, the blue line, for operators in the region. It shows us a clear trend to arise. On the lower right-hand side, you can see the numbers. For operators in general terms, almost 60%, but the trend from the operators of the region is practically 180%. These numbers uh, tell us how we're doing uh, as compared to other regions. Here, this is what I can show you. We are not the worst off, as we can see. Well, most of the problems are in Africa and Europe, and then it's Latin America and the Caribbean. Next in line, it, in the bar of Latin America and the Caribbean, in the next graph, we will we will be able to see where these operators are from, the ones that are reporting uh, these incidents. As you can see, most of the operators that report in Latin America, uh, bird strikes come from the Middle East, from Asia, Asia Pacific, and Europe. And finally, in the fourth and last bar, we see that the, the operators that have their corporate offices in Latin America and North America are among the most that uh, have the least reports of uh, strikes. And the next uh, graph, we will see the type of aircraft that was implied with these uh, bird impacts as you, or strikes. As you can see, they are mostly uh, Airbus 320, uh, 327s and so forth. And here we see 
the difference between the types of aircraft or the number of uh, reports those from the region and from outside the region. In the next uh, graph here we see the top 10 of the countries that we have identified in our database. Obviously, this is a, for every thousand operations. And we see that besides San Vicente and Grenadines, on the continental side, we have Paraguay. Then we go back to Trinidad and Tobago, Colombia, Antigua, Barbuda, Cuba, Panama, Ecuador, Grenada, and Uruguay. I reiterate, this is uh, the information we receive in our database for incidents from the airlines and air providers on land. On the next slide, we will be able to see not only by countries, but by airports. In this case, we have St. Vincent, Grenadines, uh, Argentina, Armenia, Barranquilla, Havana, Asuncion, Colombia, Mendoza, and San Andres. For, and this is for every thousand operations. Uh, on the next slide, you will be able to see what we call the heat map, where most of the events uh, are concentrated for bird impacts, what, those that have been reported anyway. Well, for some of you, it's nothing new for, that you can see where the main regions where we have more operations or bird impacts is where we have the most operations or flights. Nonetheless, I reiterate, as uh, my IKO uh, colleague mentioned, we need to foster the uh, uh, this type of culture better. Well, here I will change the context in another dynamic panel that we have in our database. I want to show you the historical information since we started with uh, compiling information. This was at the beginning of 2019 until this last information we have. Here you can see in this graph so much uh the rates or uh the levels that we've had in the region in this slide we will see according to flights flight phases this is uh, these are the bird impacts here we see that during landing taking off uh, approach the, these are the main phases, flight phases, where we have these interactions with uh, birds and uh, aircraft. Here we see the type of impact, if it's uh, just one single bird or more than one bird, or in some cases, as you can see, sometimes we cannot identify if it was one bird or more that collisioned or uh, there was a bird strike. Well, here we will talk about accidents, what we have in our database. This is what IATA has in the last few years of uh, accidents information. These are the ones we have identified that are relevant for this uh, uh, meeting and unfortunately we see that in 2019 we had a fatal accident where the aircraft uh, had an accident immediately after takeoff because of an interaction or bird strike here we can see the regimen or how many bird strike incidents we have related with birds, birds only. Here we can also see what type of factors, uh, the contributing factors. This is what's important in, in this database that we don't can, we see the uh, contributing uh, factors here. As we can see here, uh, 
we can see the uh, uh, the different conditions for the aircraft. What happened because of the bird impacts? Here we see the er errors that were identified based on the accidents, formal official accidents report, reports that we received out of these events. Here we see uh, annual uh, verification checklist, abnormal uh, callouts, uh, uh, and other uh, uh, errors that we can see here. Excuse me, I'm going fast because I have so many slides. This slide is very important because here you can see what are the measures, countermeasures we took to attend these accidents during the events. And the other situations, as we can see here, the latent situations, there were also contributing factors with these accidents. As we can see, one of the very important things we can see on this slide is so much uh, how operational safety aspects are managed and the regulatory oversight aspects and monitoring surveillance aspects, uh, starting with regulatory uh, areas. Here, it's obvious that we see we have more than 240 participants in this meeting. Well, obviously, we're not going to talk about academic aspects. Uh, if, but uh, I want to tell you briefly what we are doing in the IATA office in Miami with some work groups. As, uh, ACI has mentioned before. Here, what I want to show you is that we have very good documents or information from ICAO and some other authorities in the region. And what we have experimented is that in some cases, there is a gap between what is said and what is finally done. But I believe that we need to recognize that the experience and capacity of our authorities in some of the different countries, well, we must uh, recognize it's uh, world-class actually. What can we do? Well. One of the things that we have emphasized the most is that we are participating with different authorities with uh, collaboration work in a proactive manner. For instance, most of you know that there was a meeting uh, in this, these national groups who restarted activities to discuss these problems. Some statistics uh, were discussed uh, many of you know that sometimes the statistics are not so precise. Uh, in my case, I saw that in one airport of the region, the airport had reported for the first uh, trimester of this year, a lower amount than the events that were reported by the main airline that operates in this same airport. So, as uh, as uh, we saw in the iceberg uh, slide, there's enormous work to be done. And the main problem is obviously is to, that we need to understand clearly that uh, these problems cannot be resolved in an isolated manner. And we must also contribute with all our information so we can share, analyze, and we can make proper or correct decisions with the right people or with the proper resources or funds so we can mitigate this risk. So because we are the ones that are invading the airspace of birds and not the opposite. 
So what we need to find is the way how to coexist properly uh, between both worlds for the benefit of everyone. Well, given uh, the limited time, I don't know if you have any doubts or questions with my presentation. Thank, uh, well, we have the Q and A uh, session later on. Um, at, at your service, thank you, Fernando, for your introduction. As you will stated, this is an important topic, and we need to work as a team, not uh, isolated with the different institutions. Now, we present Virginia Valverde, coordinator of CMS of IRIS Group. They operate the San Jose Airport. Go ahead. Thank you, Marilena. Hi to everyone, a pleasure to greet you. Good morning. As Marilena said, I'm in charge of the operational safety department for the International Airport in Costa Rica. And we will talk about the effects with fauna, the events and operational consequences. All of this from a point of view of operational safety, that is my specialty. The idea here is to, uh, to, to see what happens once we have an event with fauna. It can be birds or it can be uh, impact with other types of fauna or it be in, la in landings or taking off. So what happens? The pilot will notify, it can be, it can be a pilot or a controller, uh, a traffic controller, a mechanic, ramp personnel, as our colleagues explained, any person that visualizes an impact with birds or fauna can send a notification. In our case, we as administrators of the airport, we receive this notification. We have an exclusive department for fauna control. It will be in charge of attacking or controlling a, or working on these notifications. Here on the images, we can see ideas of the notifications we receive or reports we normally see. Here you can see impacts with birds, fauna that are on the runways, taxiways, or any part of the air side where we identify fauna. This is where we will go and see what's happening so we can take different actions. We will see some of the actions we take next. When uh, we receive a notification, we need to close the runway or taxiway temporarily. Why? Because we need to see the seriousness. If, if there's an FOD or, or, or there are parts of the animal or uh, damages on the aircraft or parts of the aircraft uh, on the area, we need to have a safe zone to continue operating. So this condition is very important that we do it properly. This will be done together with the fauna personnel and the airport personnel. Everything that we find during this inspection, during closing of operations will be documented. We take photographs. As, as you saw, these are photographs that we uh, take on, on site. It's important to have a library of everything that happens with events uh, related with fauna. It's regulatory and we have this information stored properly. In parallel to this, the airline is executing its different actions that they must take after an event. Part of this is that the crew must complete the form for fauna notification and they must share it with us in the airport. What do we do with this? We send it uh, to our authorities and they will share it with ICAO. So from the point of view of, of operational safety, it's important that every interested party, that everyone that is involved, everyone must take into account their role when we must execute it and was what must be executed. And we must have constant promotion so that this chain is 
interacts formally so we can all have the proper interaction with operational safety issues. Now, this is very important. Managing an analysis. We can't only just collect information and have it out there. I'm talking about reactive, reactive aspects. Well, so what do we do? When there's an event, we always analyze the species. It's very important to be able to identify what type of species was it was so we can include it in the species map of the airport because what do we do with this species map a risk analysis of every species in order to identify how we must act what measures we must take according to uh, the species an example of this is the a guide of uh, feathers that we have in the airport this helps us to better identify species because many times after an event, it's difficult to identify the species. So these are tools we have designed so we can have uh, this information. After this, we also categorize the event because this is affecting operations. But we cannot say it, it was just an incident. No, it's important that we measure how bad it was in our airport. And I say it because it's important to tropicalize it or adapt it to every airport, but we've done it in our way. We have two categories. We have minor affectations and major affectations. Major affectations, minor affectations, excuse me, will be less than 15 minutes of uh, when operations are stopped. And uh, major is when operations are stopped for more than 15 minutes. So data is documented, it, it's registered, but it's analyzed. It's important that operational safety can follow up on what we are collecting, what our operations are telling us, and we should not be afraid to document. Some airports uh, are afraid, are afraid or uh, to document their information and their incidents. And my invitation is to please lose this fear. Well, uh, well, map out your dangers and your events, actually, in order to execute measures and be prepared uh, uh, for operational safety aspects. So some of these reactive indicators, we have many preventive ones, are the minor and major events per month. This uh, here we can see the time frames when the runway was affected or was not operating, how long it was closed or the taxiway, uh, uh, many days or uh, days or minutes during a year or a quarter. It's important to have this information. Also, the types of collections we have, what we're collecting, where, in order to know what the uh, red maps uh, or red map zones are in our airports or the damages to aircraft or equipment. This is important. So it's important to map all of this out so we can analyze it properly. What should we do with all this data and indicators? Well, it's very important that the data is shared. We must promote uh, uh, promote this data to alert the airport community so we can alert our directors, our first line personnel. Everyone must know about uh, the fauna control systems. So when we need help, well, they will know where the information is com coming from. They will know about the proper context. It's also very important to have an interrelationship with the rest of the airport, and we need to have support from everyone. The airport cannot uh, do it by itself. No, the administrators must work with the airlines, with the ground handlers, personnel from the government, that assist uh, uh, ministries of health. Uh, well, we need to work together with 
all the foreign institutions at, in the different government levels still. This is all very important so that the airport community is aware of the fauna issues. Well, and to end, it's very important to understand that we need to understand all of these events and consequences. That's what we saw in the iceberg uh, image. Well, consequences can be minimum or they can be extremely serious. And this will depend on the type of the event, but we can have incidents and accidents. And that's what we want to prevent. Any event will uh, cause delays in our operations. It can be a, a temporary uh, closing or uh, maybe the uh, airplanes are approaching or they must a detour or some that are uh, must be uh, waiting before they can land well before operations go back to normal we can have repair cases because if it's an incident or accident it will generate uh, expenses but it's better to have expenses than better than to lose human lives and uh, we were also uh, saying that depending on the damage, it could be a brief uh, repair. Uh, the air aircraft can leave after a few minutes. They can continue flying after a few minutes, or they could be affected seriously where we might lose the turbine, for instance. And uh, we can have a blocked position. Uh, uh, the airplane might be out of commission for a week or more until they get the spare part in this generate generates problems. This is my intervention from operational safety aspects. Please take all of this into account. Any questions that you have, you can send it to the email uh, that Marielena and Carla mentioned at the beginning. May you have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Virginia, for your presentation. You please send us send your questions to our email and during the week we will be responding now we want to go on to gustavo rosa of uruguay airports who will give us a presentation about the mitigation measures that they use to mitigate avian uh, risk or bird risk well good morning to everyone a pleasure to be here and share this event with you as maril Elena said the idea is to show you some of the mitigation measures and experience we have in Carrasco International Airport. So much manufacturers of uh, uh, turbines and aerodrome operators take measures to mitigate risk with fauna. The manufacturers of turbines certify these turbines with resistance tests for weight and how many birds are ingested. These air companies also train their pilots to face these types of events, they hire insurance for this. So what measures should we implement? We, air dome operators, all airports have different realities, be it due to climate aspects, migrations, uh, movements of aircraft, behavior of the species, etc. Thereby, the prevention measures and dispersion measures that we implement must be according to the needs of every airport. We must demonstrate strength of the program and procedures we use. I don't believe necessarily uh, necessary to tell you in this moment about the recommendations that are written on the manuals, so much in document 8137, like in LAR 153, in, in regard to mitigation measures. What I believe is that the best way of learning is by sharing experiences. Committees like this one or Carson Car Puff uh, uh, allow us to acquire new knowledge and tools. The airport is located 20 kilometers east of the capital city. It's within a complex ecosystem around lakes, parks, uh, around Plata River, protected zone, cemetery park, and orchard areas. Uh, at this moment, the uh, sightings of uh, birds has been 205. 
in 2005, we had the task to manage risk of fauna for air operations. In this manner, we set up multidisciplinary team and we focused and implemented techniques that were effective to scare away the species around our areas. In Carrasco, the species that predominates is Vanellus chilenis, a territorial bird that will try in all ways to establish itself in the airport. This species is practically in all South America, even in some Central American countries. The greatest abundance for these birds are during the summer and spring. Based on the experiences of other countries, we decided for a natural method implementing cetraria or falconry or hawking and dogs uh, to protect the skies. International uh, Carrasco Airport is certified according to regulation LAR 153 and Cetería del Sur Company is certified under 9001 ISO quality norm. We have a dilemma in the airports between complying with the international regulations on control measures and the national laws for protecting fauna. Thereby, we must keep a, a necessary balance between operational safety and conservation of species in order to reduce events in the airports. We split the work in two control within the airport grounds and monitoring outside the airport grounds. But if airdrome operators that are concession cannot uh, take external measures outside the airport, it is possible to uh, detect dangers and notify them through the National Committee of Fauna, so we take the pertinent measures. Oh, the residues plant is a few kilometers away. Here, we, we, if we detect uh, uh, bird dangers, in some occasions, the regulations are clear in this sense. Uh, or, uh, organization, uh, for the environment is the job of the airdrome operator and regulations for ground control are for the ground control people. Thereby events outside our areas should not be the responsibility of the operator. Anyway, we, they will be registered as, as statistics only. If, the, if these were frequent, we could have a study after this was reported to aeronautical authorities. It is possible to work with local communities in order to improve these attraction points for the fauna. Communities close to the airports a few years ago, we eliminated, for instance, trash containers where people deposited residues, many times outside the uh, containers. We have home uh, deposits for trash and in regard to internal controls, the responsibility falls on the operator who must apply all proper methods that he deems proper for all risks. It's fundamental to have a relay of uh, 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 to uh, for attractive areas for fauna and bird, and to have measures to mitigate these uh, attraction areas. We count with a perimeter uh, uh, fence around our airport. We have an organic residue plan in our airport that allows us to eliminate possibilities of residues. It's important to coordinate with the maintenance staff, the green areas, and mowing the lawns. We have immediate procedures with air traffic controls. This means that we must provide an answer in less than three minutes after uh, a notification. It's important to have coordination between the different parties not to generate incidents. We come with a program to control fauna and, and bird strikes. This is standardized with uh, the other airports in Uruguay. We try to have the same work line together with all operators. The procedure is composed by in three parts, uh, me methods of control and prevention. Methods must be effective in time. Well, so the fauna cannot get used to uh, living there. The main uh, dispersion uh, uh, aspects we have is falconry and hawking. We have uh, uh, peregrine falcons and different types of falcons and hawks, uh, biologic control with 
uh, falcons and hawks is so they can mark their territory so birds feel threatened. We have built uh, a center to raise uh, birds of prey, so we are self-sustainable, so we don't need to buy or capture uh, birds of prey. On the other hand, we have learned lessons in our airports. Hawks and uh, falcons are extremely intelligent. We count with a system of uh, biotechnics approved by the authorities of Uruguay, and this is located in, on top of different vehicles, so we can disperse uh, birds immediately with pyrotechnics. The system is composed by a, a, a control a, a area or equipment. This is very efficient to disperse uh, different species. It's a safe system for the operator since there is no direct contact with pyrotechnics. We tour around the different areas or, and the different perimeters. We register the presence of fauna in our perimeters. All, all these, uh, uh, everything is registered. We have a WhatsApp group that controls fauna and provides uh, information. The operator records these facts with images and photographs. We have created an application for fauna control where we re register, record events and reports of species. This is allow allows us to generate different statistics and indicators. Uh, at the end of each, uh, uh, if it's uh, surveillance, everything is sent uh, by email. Then we characterize the different fauna and risk analyses we monitor. And we have different observation points. We register the different species and uh, also the heights that they fly uh, on. We identify the different grounds that they live on with our geographic information system, providing more importance to the areas that are close to the approach and takeoff areas. And we also work with events related with birds and other types of fauna, call it, uh, we can call it impacts or incidents. Every time an incident or event is reported, we compile all of this information, we open up an, an investigation, then we provide an, uh, information to the operator notifying about the complementary actions we have taken. Uh, well, these CVs notifications like uh, all airports are sent to civil aviation. Well, we, if we see, for instance, we have a concentration of birds, we can disperse them uh, and the, they don't return. Then we have relevant information for birds, bird control and fauna control. We have published all of this in regard to documents, official documents, so much uh, uh, like ICAOs, we've seen, we use word, like, words like guarantee and other types of words that could be misinterpreted. We understand that we as operators cannot guarantee or prevent an event, uh, any events of, the, uh, of this type. We take actions to diminish risk to have safe operation levels or as safe as possible. Well, a few years ago, we sent a request to our, our nautical uh, authorities to change part of the text because there was a word prevent, which we cannot actually do. So we may we must take actions to diminish risk for operations of aircraft, adopting measures to reduce as much as possible the collisions between fauna and aircraft. In regard to the dissemination of the program, we do it through social media, interviews, uh, expositions, presentations within and outside the airport. Before the pandemic, we had an activity in the airport that we call airport core. Among other things, we explained to everyone 
what the fauna work was about. Well, in a nutshell, what I've said before, the key to obtain good results is to have qualified personnel and committed with their work to constantly seek or look for methods to reduce these incidents and to have a, as uh, the most records possible and uh, to correct measures along the way. Thank you very much. May you have a good day. Thank you, Gustavo, for your intervention. We want to thank all the panelists and everyone that has assisted today to this very important webinar. We hope it has been uh, very uh, important for all of you. And it, we hope it has provided lots of knowledge for everyone. Since we are, out, we are out of time, we will be responding to questions during the week. If anyone has not sent uh, your questions, please send your questions to this email address. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks to everyone. May you all have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. May you all have a, a beautiful day and week. Bye-bye. Good day to everyone.